Hi guys. So this is problem 24 from chapter 7. The section is on the natural response of an RC circuit. And um, so what we have here is we have a 100 milliamp independent current, current source in parallel with a 20 ohm resistor. There is a 1 volt um, independent voltage source there. A 5 ohm resistor here. This is 3. This is 2. And the 2 ohm resistor is connected in parallel to a 2 microfarad uh, capacitor. And we are looking for this current, I2, and this current, I1. And there is a switch. At time 0, the switch closes. So I don't have a heck of a lot of board space, but let's take a look at what we're looking for. So we're looking for this current and this current, so the current going into the node that connects the two uh, ohm resistor and the two microfarad capacitor. And um, so let me tell you how I did that one. First, I drew the circuit before time zero. And when you do that, things simplify. Look at the property of the capacitor uh, in the steady state. What is it? And once you find out or once you know what the property of the capacitor is, then this becomes um, a, a circuit that you can solve using KCL. So that's what I did. And I, my KCL node was right there. Go ahead and try that. And then for part B, we're looking at for um, I1 and I2 after the switching closes, and they're different. So what drives the uh, finding the current is going to be the property of the capacitor. What can and cannot change immediately. Once you know that, you can write a KCL equation right here. So that's what I did there. And part three, part C, the question is, why is the current um, I1 equal to I2 before time zero? Again, it goes down to the property of the capacitor. What cannot change immediately before and after? And what, how does it behave in the steady state? And then um, the, the capacitor is driving everything in this problem, pretty much. So in part C, why is the current not the same? Well, think about the capacitor. And this, um, once the switching opens, it cannot change voltage, but it can change current. And that's the reason why. We'll, we'll see that that is going to cause I2 to be different after the switching happens. And then for part E, we're writing the general equation for I sub 1. And that's going to be a function of E because once the switching closes, we are disconnected from all power sources. So that means whatever current is there is going to go away very fast. So it has to be a function of, a, it has to, be something that has an E function, which means the current will decay very quickly to zero. And same with I sub 2. And again, all of the decaying action is driven by that capacitor. So that capacitor drives this whole problem. Pause the video, try, and if you get stuck, watch it, but don't watch it and then get the solution and then do it because you can't learn that way, okay? All right, so let's get started in solving this problem. I don't have board space, so I'm going to draw um, really quick the... So let's take a look at this circuit before time zero. So before time zero, this is an open. We don't have this anywhere here, right? So this is an open, and what does that mean? Well, when that, what that means is that this is in its steady state, which means this is charged to some value. And remember, so it's it has a full charge, and then the steady state, it is an open. So it behaves just like an open circuit, which means it's not really a factor in solving this problem right here. So as you can see, I2 and I1 are going to be in series with each other, and all these are in series. So I'm going to simplify this and say this is really 7. 10. So this, I'm going to replace this whole thing with 10. So I1 is, my, is equal to I2 because the capacitor is an open and they are series connected. So now I2 is just going to be this current going into this 10 ohm resistor. 
So now what I did was I used KCL to solve this. I know this is 100 milliamp going in here and then some current is going out there and I said this is V sub X. So I take KCL at V sub X and so that means this current is going into the node, so it's going to be negative 100 milliamp. Plus, this current here is going to be Vx minus 1 over 20. And then this current here is Vx over 10. Okay? So, solve that equation, and you should come up with, let's make sure I set it up correctly and didn't make a plus minus error. So once you solve that, you should find out that V sub x is equal to 1 volt. So this is 1 volt. So then that means this current, I sub 2, which is Vx over 10, is going to be 100 milliamps. So that is the answer to part A. So I1 before times 0 is the same as I2 because the capacitor is an open and they are both 100 milliamps. Now, we want to find the, um, what, what is I1 and what is I2 after the switching happens. So, let's restore the circuit. And then now we close the switch. So, we have five here and we have two here, and then two microfarads there, and then we have three here. So once we shorted out, we effectively remove this part of the circuit. It's shorted out, so it's gone. Now, but remember we use KCL, right? So we use KCL, we need to know that that was one volt before the switching opened. That was, if we took the voltmeter to that, when the switch is open, that, at that point it would be one volt. So things change rapidly once the, the circuit closes, right? Um, so let's take a closer look at this circuit. This is really in series with this. So I'm going to simplify that, this, by putting it up here and calling it 8. And this 8 is really in parallel with that, with this 2, which is in parallel with that 8. So what we really have is we really have 8 in parallel with 2, in parallel with 2 um, micros, right? Okay, so I said at the very beginning of this video that that capacitor drives everything, the analysis of this, because it has constraints, right? Resistor currents can change instantaneously, um, capacitor currents can change instantaneously, but what is the property of the capacitor? Key properties of the capacitor are, um, in the DCs, in the steady state, it is an open, it behaves like an open, um, and it gets charged to some value, and once the switching closes, it starts to, dis, um, it starts to uh, discharge its energy that was stored in it. So, but it cannot change the voltage instantaneously. So whatever voltage it had before when the switch was open, it has to have that voltage immediately after the switch closes. So what voltage did it have? Well, we know that we had one volt here. We proved that with K, KCL when we uh, found the, the current. So we don't know what it is here, but we know that this is just simply a voltage divider circuit right before when immediately after the switching happens, we have, for an instant, we have a voltage divider circuit. So that means we have 8 and 10, so 20% of the 1 volt is dropped across this 2, uh, two ohm resistor. And because that 2 ohm resistor is in um, parallel with the 2, ohm, uh, two microfarad capacitor, they have the same voltage drop, which is 0.2. So a voltage divider circuit, tells me that this is, both of these are 0.2, right? So this is also 0 0.2. This is I2, this is I1. So since they are connected in parallel, they both have 0.2. So that means, well, we know I is equal to V over R. V over R, so I1 is going to be that 0 0.2 over 2, which is, so, 
So then that gives me 100 milliamps. So this current is now 100 milliamps. So I now need this 100 milliamps. But, so then I know that this voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor is also 0.2 because it's really connected in parallel with that. So we have the circuit diagram tells us the direction of the current is into that node meaning currents into a node are negative. So I sub 2 is negative 0 0.2 over 8. And that gives me, I didn't write it down, so. So 0 0.2 is, over 8 is negative 25 milliamps. Let me just check my diet. My schematic here, really quick. Make sure. Okay. So. So then, so that's I sub two is negative twenty five milliamps, and of course the capacitor current is going to be um, the sum of all of those. So. So it's what, it ends up being 125 milliamps. They didn't ask us to find it, but, but uh, that's what it would be. So now, what questions did we answer? So we answered A, I1 is, is equal to I2 is equal to 100 milliamps. We answered B, I1 is 100 milliamps. I2 is negative 25 milliamps. And part C, why is I1 before the switching happens equal to I2 before, after the switching, why is I1 the same before and after the switching? Um, oh. Okay, so the I1 is the same because of the property of the capacitor, right? Because it can't change it, its voltage drop. So that's why, so the voltage drop ends up being 0.2, which ends up being 0.2 divided by 2, which is 100 milliamps. So um, that's the reason for part C. And then for part D, for part D, why is this current not the same? Um, this current is not the same because once the capacitor, the, even though it, the capacitor cannot change voltage, it can change current. And it does, and it changes into 125 here, which changes the uh, value across um, the 8 ohm and the I2 value. So that has to change because KCL has to be preserved. So, so that is why. So then I1, for part E, we're looking for I1. Um, so you should be thinking to yourself, I'm not connected to a power source, so I should not get... Um, what I expect is that the current, this current is going to decay very fast and go to zero very fast. So you should be thinking to yourself that use your, your current equation has to be a function of E because we, have, we are not connected in it to any power source at all. So again, the capacitor drives this problem. So what are we looking at? We need this voltage. So voltage across the capacitor is going to be Vc of T is equal to V initial, so V initial times E to the negative T over tau. So V initial we know is 0.2, so this is 0 0.2, but what's tau? Tau for an RC circuit is RC, right? But what's R? R is the resistance seen by the capacitor. So what resistance does this capacitor see? So if we are the capacitor, we look down, we see that two, but we also see that that two is in parallel with eight. So what the total capacitor, the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor is going to be two in parallel with eight. And two in parallel with eight is 1.6. So this is 1.6 times to B minus 6. So putting that into your calculator, you should get that tau is 312. Okay, 312,000. So this is really 
312,000 T. So that makes sense. That equation makes a lot of sense because we're, we're going to say to ourselves, oh, well, E to the negative 3,012 T is something that goes to zero very quickly, which matches our expectations of the capacitor is like dissipating all its energy really quickly and the current dying to zero really quickly. And it makes sense because we are not connected to any power source. So if you're on a test and you get a, 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 a voltage function like that, you should be happy because it matches your expectation. Now, let's find I. Well, I is V over R, and now we have V. That was what we needed that for. So this is just I is V over R. This voltage, in fact, they all have the same V because they're all parallel connected. So I'll leave it to you um, to verify this, but this is going to be that V divided by that R, which is divided by 2. So it gives you 0.1E to the negative 312,000 T. And then this I then is going to be 0.025 times E to the negative 312,000 T amps. And that's the answer to this problem. So remember to share the video if it helped you. Um, because if you're confused by it, then there's a good chance your classmates are confused by it too. And you can connect with them on Facebook and then help each other out. So. Um, that's it.